So the Tampa Bay Buccaneers pass coverage has been really good these past couple weeks. It was great against Green Bay, and given that Kansas City's offensive line has plenty of injuries, it's certainly an interesting matchup uh, going into the Super Bowl, and that could be one of the biggest advantages Tampa Bay has. Let's show this play, where it's Jason Pierre-Paul going up one-on-one -on -one against 77 for Green Bay. That's their backup left tackle. Obviously, Bakayari was not available, and I thought Tampa Bay did a good job of making Green Bay uh, pay for not having their starting tackle. They did a really good job at attacking their weakness. Once this ball is snapped, you see Jason Pierre-Paul and how he gets his right arm just to the left side of uh, Billy Turner. That's the tackle that he's going up against. And at this point, he's pretty much won the matchup. And I think that Tampa Bay does a great job at just consistently beating tackles that aren't as good as them. You know, when they have to go up against good talent, they can win their matchups and they can lose it, obviously. But when they get the matchups against guys that they're just better than, they can really feast. And I mean, you saw Shaq Barrett, a lot of why he was how he was able to get so many sacks last year was having, you know, a four sack day against Nate Soldier and things of that nature. I think this one's a great example of what I'm talking about, where this time it's Shaq Barrett going up one-on-one -on -one against, this is Eric Fisher, so this is their starting left tackle, uh, so it's not the same thing. This is a, a good tackle. Usually I'm talking about sort of these lesser talents, but I, I still think it's worth pointing out. Uh, what he's going to be able to do here. Really, the key thing he's going to do is kind of fake as though he's going to be going to the left side of the screen, but then go to the right. So go to Fisher's left, but then he's going to try and get to the inside of the tackle, which is to the, you know, to Fisher's right. And he's going to do this really with just two steps. He's going to take a wide step out, but then cut in. That's what he's going to do here. And watch. So he does do that. And you look at Fisher now. Look at how far extended that left leg is. This is really a huge extension right here. And it's not exactly what he typically likes to do. So again, you're just, you just kind of see things with a guy like Barrett that you don't see with other edge rushers. He's honestly one of the best things about him is his high football IQ. That might be his best attribute. And he'll make these kind of moves where, you know, a lot of guys sort of will go up to the line and honestly not have too much of a plan and just try and, you know, see what they can do. Barrett is always, he's playing chess uh, for sure. He then steps to the outside, is able to grab onto Fisher's outside hand, which, you know, gave him the leverage to get over, knocks the ball out, and Tampa Bay recovered. So that's a huge play. And again, if Barrett can just do that once in the Super Bowl, that could be a game-changing play. One turnover could be the difference in this game which is why it's so important, and it's something that people kind of sometimes overlook uh, offensive line play against, you know, uh, defensive line play, but it really is important. Barrett can also do something like this, which he's done a number of times in his career. He did it in the conference championship game, going up one-on-one -on -one against Billy Turner, right tackle, and what he's going to try and do is try to just, you know, speed rush here, which is, you know, not necessarily what he's the best at, but the reason why he's going to be able to do this is because he's going to time the snap count. So he's just going to try and use that as an advantage. If he screws this up, it's a penalty, which, you know, Barrett's also done that a number of times in his career. Uh, it's jumped off sides and given the opposing team a five-yard penalty. But it's also a second down at 11 here, so maybe he just feels like it's worth it. I don't know. And as you see, clearly it was worth it. He times it perfectly. Rodgers can't do anything, and him and Pierre Paul helped. But really, it was Shaq Barrett on that one who made the sack, and Barrett got the full credit for the sack, uh, which I'm sure JPP would have liked to get a half sack on it, but no, it was Barrett's sack. I'll show the other angle right here. As you can see, I'm going to pause it the second you see that the ball starts to go down, and that's the second that uh, Shaq Barrett starts to move. So this is not offsides. This was just a good play. This is another thing that I actually feel like could really come in handy for Tampa Bay is... So what's going to happen is there's going to be a twist right here. Honestly, uh, this point isn't that important. Really, it's what's going to happen next. So Mahomes takes the snap, and he's going to drop back. And he starts moving up in the pocket, and he notices he kind of has a gap right there that maybe he can run through. I think against a lot of defensive lines, maybe he could run through this. The issue is that Tampa Bay, they don't have guys who are just good pass rushers. You know, they have guys who can rush the passer well, but they're really complete players, you know, Jason Pierre-Paul especially, there's no facet of the game he's bad at. Well, as in, there's no facet of being a defensive lineman that he's bad at. Uh, maybe if he was, uh, you know, a punter, it wouldn't work out too well, but I'm sure he could still find a way to, like, you know, at least punt 40 yards or so. Anyways, back to the play. 
Mahomes tries to run through, but gets tackled by Pierre Paul, and Sue also got in there. They, they just keep their head up, and they stay prepared for stuff like that. This one's another good example. This is going to be against Rodgers, not against uh, Mahomes, but still, uh, same idea. It's Shaq Barrett going up one-on-one -on -one against Turner, so that's what's happening. And as you see, Barrett's going to do a fine job. He's gotten to the outside, is about to create some pressure, so Rodgers has to move here. He has to either get rid of the ball, or he can try and scramble. And one thing he notices is that there is a gap since uh, Sue is getting double teamed to Rodgers' right, which is towards our left of the screen. That now means that he can maybe run in between his tackle and guard, and there should be some room to run. The issue, again, is just that Tampa Bay, they keep their heads up, and they don't just try and get past their linemen. They try to get to the quarterback, and that involves knowing where the quarterback is, which they do a great job of always knowing uh, where the guy with the ball is. Aaron Rodgers tries to scramble. Barrett is able to bring him down. So again, just keeping your eyes up and not allowing Mahomes to scramble and get those rushing plays could be a big deal. And also, I mean, you know, he ended up with four rushes in this game for 28 yards, which is one of those was a, a designed run. So that's part of it also. But, you know, it's really less about, I think, stopping him from being able to run for first downs. It's not not about that, but it's more about just keeping him in the pocket and, you know, forcing him to get rid of the ball quicker and just having him not try to get around the pocket more so than actually being able to be in position where you can uh, stop him. And there were a couple times, of course, that he tried to run. Uh, and it resulted in a sack because of it. So that's key as well. I think this one was my favorite example of what I'm talking about, where what's going to happen is that first, you're going to want to watch Sue because he's going to get blocked, uh, you know, not... He's going to get blocked further to the inside, which means that there is going to be a gap. Watch. Mahomes takes the snap. He's now going to look up. He sees, okay, there's daylight right there. This tip can often mean a ton of yards. The only problem, uh, it's going to be a defensive end, but not the one on the right the one on the left. Right there, Jason Pierre-Paul. This is exactly what I'm talking about, of just keeping your head up and reading the play, figuring out where the quarterback is going, and if he's going to run, find a way to bring him down. Pierre-Paul is able to run over. He's going to make a pretty quick tackle on Mahomes. Mahomes gains four yards, but you know, you'll know you take that given that huge gap that was two to right. So uh, I think that's a really good play. And again, uh, is that really the biggest thing? No, but I think getting pressure is just as is more important, I would say. I do think they'll be able to get pressure. Would I be shocked if Tampa Bay just really gets pressure on Mahomes all game and doesn't allow Mahomes to scramble and pick up a ton of yards? I really wouldn't. However, would I be shocked if they were able to shut down Mahomes because of it? Yes, of course I would. He's Patrick Mahomes. He has so many weapons. There's Andy Reid, and they know everything we know. They're fully well aware that that's going to be a mismatch, and they're going to have to get rid of the ball quickly. It'll probably affect their game plan, and I'm sure Kansas City will probably be fine, but there is at least that inherent advantage for Tampa Bay. So yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.